My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St. Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning worship on this 10th Sunday after Trinity, which will begin by singing our first hymn. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. We come together as brothers and sisters in Christ to ask for God's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Listen to me. 
you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people, hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last for ever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right, you people who have taken my instruction to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals, or be terrified by their insults, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, the worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last for ever my salvation through all generations. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Awake, as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced that monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea so that the redeemed might cross over? Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction.
you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we pray now that as we come to reflect on it, you will meet us afresh in the power of your Holy Spirit and give to each one of us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Here's a short video clip, not very high quality, but you can see what's going on of a dog trying to eat some chips. Well, you might think the owners of the dog are being a little bit mean there, but I'm sure that they're having a bit of fun with their pet and that they would have fed him some under the table at the end. But the reason I've shown you that is that sometimes, as Christians, our experience can be a bit like what is happening to that dog. On the one hand, we have read God's promises to us. We believe and trust in Jesus. We commit our lives to him. We seek his help and guidance. We sing of surrender and self-abandonment. And our hearts are lifted by God's amazing promises to us all. And yet, on the other hand, we never quite see the full realisation of those promises in our life on earth. We eagerly reach out for them. We study the scriptures. We worship. We pray. We seek more of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And yet, there is always something in the way. Something that prevents us tasting what has been set before us in all its fullness. And faced with the reality of that experience, we console ourselves with the thought that this life is like a speck of dust on the stage of eternity, and that at the end of it, of course, things will be completely different. And so we learn to wait with patience and hope for the day when the fallenness of our world and the weakness and imperfection of our human nature will finally be redeemed by the intervention of our Creator God as he brings this world to an end and establishes forever the age to come in which everything we long for now will be freely and fully 
provided. Waiting is an unavoidable and necessary part of life and of hope. Hope necessitates waiting because we can only hope for what we do not yet see and therefore if we are ever to see it there must be a period of time between when our hope is born and when our hope is realised. So how do we encourage ourselves as we wait? What does God offer us as we live in the tension between what is and what is to come? Our reading from Isaiah speaks to us as those who are in transit between two worlds. And it sets out a very powerful reminder of the lasting values of the spiritual world and the passing values of the world in which we currently live, but which is only a temporary place of residence. What does God, through the prophet Isaiah, do to encourage his readers in this passage? First, he asks his people to remember what he has done. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from whom you were digged. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For when he was but one, I called him, and I blessed him, and made him many. The emphasis here is that as they look back, they lose sight of themselves and see God at work. I called, I blessed, I made. For us today, living under the new covenant, we can perhaps sense God pointing us in the same way, not back to Abraham, but back to Jesus. And as we look at Jesus, we hear him saying to us, I loved, I redeemed, I delivered. Whenever the world presses in, God's word here encourages us to remember who we are, but especially to remember who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Second, God sets out his promises in very clear and certain terms, calling us to hold on to what he has said. The Lord will comfort Zion. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Listen to me. For a law will go forth from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. My deliverance draws near speedily, my salvation has gone forth, and my arms will rule the peoples. The ransomed of the Lord shall return, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness. What God is dealing in here is clarity. He is saying that this is what he is going to do and nothing can stop it. Thirdly, he goes on to emphasize that we can be sure of what he has promised by showing up the difference between the enduring nature of his eternal plans as compared to the passing nature of our human experience. Lift up your eyes and look, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Fear not the reproach of others for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my deliverance will be for ever, and my salvation to all generations. Half an hour from the end of the queue for a big ride in a theme park I went to a very long time ago, someone had written on a wooden fence post, 
at the side of the path. I have been in this queue for two hours and am completely fed up. There were also unrepeatable comments about boredom and advice to give up and turn back. I wonder how we wait for the fulfilment of God's promises. As we continue on our own journeys of faith, let's engage afresh with the challenge to prepare ourselves for the age to come by infusing more holiness into our lives now. Sometimes we, too, may be tempted to get fed up. How long will it be before we can really get our teeth into the appetising promises God sets before us and be fully satisfied by them? As we engage in that kind of questioning, it's helpful to be reminded that however interminable the waiting may seem to be, it will ultimately be God's plans and purposes that prevail, because he is the Lord. I had a dream once about the power of the sea. I was near the coast, and in the distance was a massive tidal wave about to come in with enormous force and sweep away everyone in its path. I saw and almost felt the foaming waters travelling with such force that I knew anyone caught up in them would be completely lost, and I was desperately looking for a place of refuge and protection beyond the reach of the water. As we stand on that shoreline of faith today, knowing our own failures and shortcomings, and perhaps recognising or fearing that out there a huge wave may be gathering and speeding towards us, let's hear again God's word of assurance and invite him to be for us that place of refuge and protection. As we come afresh to open ourselves to the working of his healing grace in our lives, let's remember that one day our struggle with the frailties of our human body will come to an end, and that we will reach our final and glorious destination, where healing will be freely and eternally and completely available to all. And as we allow ourselves to be strengthened by the certain promises of God's word, let's pray too that he will use us to bring hope to others who, like us, are still waiting. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonder and beauty of this world and of our human existence which despite all its shortcomings still reflects your glory and speaks of your love. Thank you too, and even more, that this world is not our home, because you have made us to share eternity with you, and it is your longing that we should do so. Thank you for making that goal possible through Jesus. Help us as we struggle with the effects and consequences of the brokenness and fallenness of humanity and of creation itself. And as we reflect on your call to holiness in preparation for what is to come, remind us of what you have done for us in Jesus. Let us hear afresh and anew what you have told us through Jesus, and deepen our certainty and assurance of the truth of the promises you have made, which are secured by Jesus. 
آمن We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand, of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll sing our third hymn. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You have created us out of your love and for your love. You have made our hearts to long for you, and nothing else will fully satisfy them. Help us to turn to you in our hunger and thirst, that in you and your love we may find refreshment and life. You, Lord, are the giver of life in all its fullness. Blessed are you, God, for ever. Lord, you alone are our strength and hope. We give thanks for all who sustain us in life with their love and care. 
Bless all those who seek to bring to us the bread of life, and all who seek to help to provide us with our spiritual needs. We pray for all who celebrate the sacraments, for those preparing for confirmation. We remember in your presence all who are pilgrims and seekers, those who long for your love and wish to serve you. We ask you to guide any who feel they have lost their way and put too much trust in material things alone. Lord, you alone are our strength and hope. We give you thanks for all who work to provide us with food and refreshment. We remember those who provide us with bread, the farmers, the millers, the bakers and the shops. We ask you to guide all who are caught up in materialism and consumerism. We remember especially all who have lost sight of the deeper meaning of life. We pray for all who are unemployed, those struggling with financial difficulties, those suffering from hunger or homelessness, all who lack the necessary resources for their well-being. Lord, you alone are our strength and hope. Lord, we give thanks for our homes and for all who care for us. We pray for our friends and our loved ones. We remember our community, its schools, for refreshment for all pupils, teachers and staff on holiday at this present time. For all the places of work in our community. May all reflect your glory and your love. And let us be aware of any who are lonely or feel rejected. Lord, you alone are our strength and hope. We give thanks for the renewing powers of our bodies and for all who share in the healing and care of others. We pray for all who feel their lives are empty or meaningless all who feel they have wasted their lives or never fully lived. We remember before you also friends and loved ones who are ill, suffering in body, mind or spirit, for your healing and renewing grace to be poured out upon them, and for those grieving the loss of those they love, to know the comfort and hope of your presence. Lord, you alone are our strength and hope. Lord, we put our trust in you. We believe that in you is the gift of eternal life. We pray that through you and your love, we may be brought at the last to the fullness of your kingdom. We remember in your presence with thanksgiving all the saints who have walked the path of faith before us and we ask you to bless us and all those whom we love that we may follow in their footsteps until that day when we rejoice together in your eternal kingdom merciful father accept these prayers for the sake of your son our saviour jesus christ amen And now we'll sing our fourth hymn.
And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light, and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here today. We extend a warm invitation to you to join us again next week for our service of morning prayer.